Hi, I'm Christina Jacobs with Arsenal Handicraft. I'm also a speedball demo artist. And today I'm gonna to show you everything you need to know to use your speed screens. Everything from properly exposing them, to washing them out, to finally printing your beautiful artwork. They come in a light proof bag and you really don't wanna open it until you're ready to expose your screens. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you what's inside. There's a couple of clear plastic overlays. These will be laid on top of everything while you expose your screen. And then there's three speed screens inside. And one side of each speed screen has a white carrier attached to it. We'll be removing this white carrier right before we expose the screen. So let's get some artwork ready to print. We need to make sure it's completely opaque black with no grays and no fuzzy edges. So if we zoom in on this piece of artwork here, we can see that the edges are very distinct and clear, and all we need to do is fill it in with black and we'll be all set. The second thing we have to do is mirror our artwork. This particular design looks the same whether or not it's mirrored, but if that's not the case for you, you'll have to make sure that it's flipped horizontally. You can do this in whichever graphics program you're using, or if all else fails, check your printer settings, there's usually something there that allows you to flip it. Once your artwork is complete, print it onto a clear transparency using any inkjet printer. If you're having trouble telling which side of your transparency is the print side, usually the print side is a little bit darker than the other side. This side is the print side. If you're not sure, an easy thing to do is just wet the tip of your finger and then touch it to your transparency and if it sticks, that's the print side. Now we're ready to expose the screen. We're in our basement studio, away from windows or any other strong light source that could interfere with exposure. You can honestly just hold the light source above your screen, it exposes so quickly, but we chose to suspend it using a couple of clamps and a piece of wood. The light source needs to be 14 inches above the screen. You can see here our table was a little bit too low, so we put a box underneath to decrease the distance. Once your light source is set up, you're almost ready to open up that light proof bag. But first, let's get to know your speed screen. It actually has two sides. There is a dull side and then there is a shiny side. The shiny side is your exposure side. This is what's going to go underneath the light facing the light. So think about shiny, reflecting light, sunshine, and go this way. The other side is your squeegee side. And I like to think about that happy sound of a squeegee scraping across your screen as you're printing your beautiful artwork. Um, and hopefully that will help you remember that the dull side is your squeegee side. Okay, now that we know which direction the screen will face, we're going to place four things underneath our light source. First of all, we're going to place a black piece of construction paper. It can be a black t-shirt, a black piece of fabric. We already have a black tablecloth here, so this step is actually a little bit redundant for us. Second of all, we're gonna place that speed screen exposure side up, peeling the white carrier off and setting it aside for future use. Next, we're gonna place our plastic transparency. It's really important here to make sure that the print side of the transparency does not touch the screen. And then lastly, we're gonna place the plastic overlay on top of everything. We're using an LED 30 watt lamp here, so our exposure time is going to be only one minute. If you have the Speedball 250 watt photo flood bulb and lamp, that'll work great too. Your exposure time for that will be nine minutes. As soon as the timer goes off, we'll grab our screen and the white carrier that came with it, and we're gonna head to wash out our screen. Here's a few things to keep in mind while you wash out your screen. Warm or hot water works the best. If your sink has one of those spray settings, that works really great too. Now I'm using a cookie sheet here just to prop up the screen so you can see it and I'm not leaning over it in front of the camera, but the back of your sink works just fine. Try as best as you can to keep it vertical. If it folds over on itself like that, no big deal, but try to keep it completely flat. Only wash the exposure side of your screen, don't flip it over. So if you have exposed screens in the past, you might be used to flipping it to the back side. Don't do that, just keep it on the exposure side only and let the water do the work. You don't need to agitate it with anything, not even your fingers, because this emulsion is actually pretty soft. So just be patient, make sure you're spraying each and every one of the little details in your design and take your time. 
If you're not sure if your artwork is washed out yet, it probably isn't. If you can just barely see it, you still need to continue to spray it until all of the emulsion washes out of that area that was black on your transparency. And you'll know when it happens because you'll be able to see through it. The whole process in real time took me about three to four minutes. Once your artwork is completely washed out of your screen, pat it dry with paper towels really gently and then lay it down on the white carrier that you saved from before. The screen should be completely dry before post exposing it. A fan, a hair dryer, or just the sun will speed up this process, but it should dry in about 30 to 45 minutes. Next, we'll post expose the screen. We're gonna put it back under our light source for the same amount of time that we exposed it for in the first place, so in our case, it'll be one minute. This gives it rigidity and durability so that it can be used over and over again. If you're using the Speedball Photo Flood Lamp, your post exposure time will be nine minutes. We're ready to print. We'll flip our screen over to the squeegee side and tape it down onto our printing table. Screens can also be installed into wood frames. An 8x10 frame comes with a speed screen kit. And that's it! That's how you screen print with a speed screen!